forward this quickly just so I have it. And then I'm going to share my screen with you and give you a little introduction to what we're going to be working on today. So today I want to examine Wisconsin and Wisconsin water and see if we can make a little connection to what we saw in Flint. Flint, you know, we just did a real basic overview introduction to Flint as an example of, of lead poisoning or lead pollution in drinking water. Um, but, you know, normally we actually spend quite a bit more time on that. But uh, I do think Flint serves as a, a good example for a couple of reasons. Number one, um, Madison is actually very similar. And I mentioned to you how in downtown Madison um, in the late 90s, I was actually living in downtown Madison and I got a letter. I think I mentioned this the other day. And in that letter, it stated that it was from the city council, the Madison mayor's office. It stated that the city of Madison was going to replace all of the lead pipes that were running from the water main to my apartment. I lived in an apartment at that time. And so the city of Madison made the choice to spend taxpayer dollars to remove all of the lead pipes rather than um, take the, the risk that those lead pipes could potentially leach into the drinking water and then poison people and in particular, you know, young people. And so why didn't Flint do that? Um, that was the question that I had posed a couple of days ago. And I want to introduce you formally to this concept of environmental justice today. And there is a definition and environmental justice we define as the fair treatment of all people, regardless of race, color, national origin, income, respect to development, implementation, and enforcement of environmental laws, regulation, and policies. And that is directly from the Environmental Protection Agency, the federal agency that is tasked with uh, protecting our environment and making sure that we as citizens have a healthy place to live. So the idea is that you as a citizen, regardless of um, your demographics, race, color, national origin, income, uh, are entitled equally to a, a safe and healthy environment, okay? So that, that's the basic idea with environmental justice. And so what we are going to examine today is whether or not there is a difference given those demographics um, in the environment in which people in our country live, okay? So depending on your race, color, national origin, income, et cetera, are you exposed to different environmental conditions? And I mentioned Flint as an example. Um, and in Flint, of course, the problem was related to these lead pipes. And then the treatment of those lead pipes, um, that was half of the problem. But the other half of the problem was how the public reacted and how the public officials um, treated those reactions. And instead of just being straightforward and addressing the, the lead issue, um, they made excuses and they put off solving the problem for several years. Uh, we are now five to six years into the Flint Michigan water problem, and it is still a problem. So does that happen here um, in Wisconsin? And today what I'd like to do is examine several cities in Wisconsin, and we could pick any number of cities. I just happened to pick these five because I think they are good cities um, to examine because they we can compare and contrast some different demographics. And so I want to consider Madison, Milwaukee, the uh, Appleton, Green Bay region, Wausau and Manitowoc. And uh, I wanna look at how the demographics of those cities potentially relate to various environmental exposures, okay? So I'm gonna give you this website here in a second. It's actually on the Google doc that I just shared with you. And what I'd like to do is open this policy map up for a moment and give you a quick tour and explain to you how this all works, okay? 
This is referred to as a GIS or Geographic Information Systems, Geographic Information Systems map. And the idea with GIS maps um, is that it allows you on a map to overlay uh, several pieces of data. And uh, these have become really popular in the last 20 years or so, GIS mapping. And so you can pick one of those cities and then you can select from a wide range of, of both environmental conditions and various other uh, variables, anything from income to uh, racial demographics, uh, lead exposure, um, all, anything that is a data point related to that city is available to you on this map. And what I would like you to examine are whether or not you are seeing any particular patterns emerging. I'm gonna give you some direction in terms of the data to examine. And I would like you to decide in your groups whether or not you are seeing any patterns. And then why? Um, what is it about that city, the history of that city, uh, who works there, the age of the city, um, that might lead or have led to the patterns that you see. And I would like you to come to a consensus in your group, which you then discuss with all of us. So today is a day that we have to actually participate and discuss a little bit. Okay, take a look at this map um, for a second. This is uh, the GIS map I was telling you about. And when you go to this website, you're gonna notice uh, this is actually a website for the entire country. And so the easiest thing to do is just enter uh, the city in question into the search bar, Green Bay, Wisconsin. Spell it right if you can, spell it correctly. And then once you enter that city, then it will bring up a map of, of, uh, of that particular city. You can zoom in and out for any kind of detail that you want. Now, in the little uh, search bar here, you can enter data or you can select from the drop down menu any number of pieces of data. So, for example, if you click on health, you'll notice there's a whole bunch of options. Um, of course, right now, COVID 19 is a big one, uh, but also uh, down here, you'll see lead exposure. So if you select lead exposure, then all of the data for Green Bay, Wisconsin related to lead exposure is pulled up and then you can do some analysis. On the left-hand side is a key. So you have to examine the keys. Um, this will tell you the range of lead exposure and then the map itself is color coded according to that key. You can see where the concentration of lead poisoning is. So then for this to be powerful and useful, now you wanna add a second piece of data and see if you can find a relationship. So for example, under incomes and spending, you might consider family income, you might consider per capita income. Per capita is how much the average income is per uh, citizen. And um, when you do that, you will start to see some more patterns. So the dark colors in this case are higher incomes and the lighter colors are lower incomes. And so then you can see, well, is there a relationship between income and lead exposure or any other variable that you might, you might select? So on the map here, or on your assignment, um, I do have a link to the map. And then I've selected five cities. Um, I guess I left Manitowoc out for this one, but that's okay. Um, I've picked five cities. And then I do give you some places to start, okay? So health, lead exposure, per capita income. You can click on demographics. For demographics, you're gonna wanna click through the various demographics that are available to you. So start with non-white. You can go to the other ones and you can explore that, okay? So when you're finished um, in your groups discussing and examining these maps, then I would like you to discuss uh, the following. Number one, what patterns are you seeing? And in some cases, maybe you don't see a pattern. If that's the case, then put that down. Try to come up with a reason for those patterns. 
And number three, as a group, can you come up with a consensus about what it says about that particular city in Wisconsin? And uh, number four, do you see this type of information in the news? Do you see any flaws? Are there some things on the website that maybe stand out to you as being um, flaws or maybe something that would lead you to believe the data is harder to interpret? And then number six, does this represent an environmental justice issue for your particular city? And if so, whose responsibility is it to address that? So I'm gonna put you into five groups. Please take a look here. Group one will have Green Bay, group two, Madison, group three, Milwaukee, group four, Appleton, group five, Wausau. And I would like you to appoint one person, maybe two, who will discuss with the group when we're finished. Um, your results. So 